As our closer look at technology and the church continues, I'm pleased to welcome Sister Nancy Usselman to the discussion. Sister Nancy is a media literacy specialist and has been a member of the Daughters of St. Paul for over 25 years. Her order is dedicated to evangelizing in and through the media. Sister Nancy, welcome to the show and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, I love it that your order uses media, mm -hmm. number one. How exciting. It's a whole order dedicated to that yes. and all sorts of media. I'm assuming. Can you tell me yes. a little bit about what media you use and how you're using it? Sure. Well, our founder, uh, Blessed James Alperione, founded us in northern Italy. And in 19, so actually we're celebrating our centenary, centenary year this year, 1915 oh. was when we were founded. So he founded us really to be evangelizers of the culture within the media culture. And at that time it was only print mm -hmm. media and it was about printing Bibles and catechisms. And like here we are a hundred years later and it's like the world of media has exploded <laughs> literally. And we've taken on every type of media as it comes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, now every type of social media, you know, we're on Pinterest, Twitter, uh, you know, Instagram, we're all um, several Facebook pages and numerous websites, <laughs> blogs, uh, media musings of a Pauline sisters, one blog, okay. and another sister whose name is Sister Helena Rayfield Burns has a blog called Hell Burns. <laughs> so, awesome. yeah, we're all into blogs and all different things about social media. And I think all of that is just like, how do we get the message of Christ out there? How do we spread the word of God today? Mm -hmm. So not 10 years ago, not 20 years ago, but now. And that's what our founder was always emphasizing to us, to where all our sisters around the world are dedicated just to this mission of spreading the word of God through the media and being present within the media culture. So we enter into this dialogue with the culture, and that's why when we talk about a theology of popular culture, that's what we're trying to develop even more, um, where we teach media literacy, teach people to be mindful of the media, but with the faith perspective. You know, not just like yeah. question the media, but we're also bringing our gospel values, our faith values to the media. Can you dive a little deeper into that, the theology sure. and pop culture? Because you think of that nowadays, very different. Yeah. Uh, our, our, our theology about our church and pop culture is just, you don't see God or any, right. any of the values uh, that the church gives us in our society. In many cases, it tells sure. us to turn away from, from sacrificing, from serving. Sure. Uh, how, how does that even tie in together? Yeah, it seems like, you know, faith and popular culture are a dichotomy. Well, in actual fact, I think our Catholic faith is much more incarnational. And we, when we're, we talk about our faith, we're talking about Jesus Christ who became man, who became a human being and teaches us what it means to be a perfect human, a perfect human being and, and is present in all our human experiences. So nothing that's truly human is really outside of the realm of faith. Yeah. And so what is popular culture? Popular culture is addressing uh, in like popular songs and movies and even independent films often address the deep, profound, existential desires of humanity. Okay, what are we talking about? The need for communion, the need for connection, the need for um, truth mm. in our life and honesty. And we don't always find that, but there's a deep yearning for it within the human person. And so much of popular culture addresses it, but it doesn't know where else to go. And this is where mm. faith, our faith, especially our Catholic faith, can offer that, that answer, which is Christ. Christ is the answer to every fulfillment of every human longing. And uh, so that's kind of, it's a very incarnational theology uh, perspective on popular culture. We're not putting our faith on top of the culture, but we're trying to transform it from within. So you address, you start there, where we have in common with whatever is in popular culture. Uh, like Lady Gaga or Rihanna or, you know, Kanye West. What, what is in their stories, stories, because everyone's telling a story. Yeah. What's in their stories of their music that's addressing that one of those deep desires of humanity? And, and so it, in, as Catholics, we have a great gift in the sacraments, mm -hmm. you know, we don't realize, but our, our sacraments are tangible symbols and signs. We use fire, water, oil, incense, you know, artistic images, theatricality and ritual. Mm -hmm. All of these things are, they're art that teaches us that, that grace is present. 
they're tangible signs of God's grace. Well, when you look at in popular culture, especially in movies, you could see symbols of light, light and yeah. symbols of water. And what do they represent within that film? And we give a unique sacramental perspective to the viewing of a film. And, and that's as, as Catholics, that's how we give that, that incarnational theology to popular culture and develop that within the culture. Um, so. <laughs> the, relating to the culture, obviously super important. Sometimes the church isn't always on the forefront of change. True. How does one, how does our church become a church of the culture, church for the culture? I think it's just, it's an awareness, um, you know, because we're not living outside of the realm of time. No. The church exists in time, even though, you know, we have the whole body of the saints and, you know, all those uh, that have come before us, but we, we live within the times. And I think our founder, Blessed James Alberione, always taught us this. We are called to reach the people now of this era. And in order to do that, we can't um, like discard anything in media or even of the popular culture because it's there and it's present and we live within it. And we ourselves are all part of it. I mean, I watch a lot of movies. I love popular music. I'm a popular music junkie. So, I mean, it's not that it's like to remove ourselves from it. The church needs to be involved in it. And not to the point where we just accept everything that comes to us, but where we are critical engagers of the culture uh, and create that dialogue with the culture. So it's not putting ourselves separate from it, but it engages with it. And I think I see that a lot. I mean, I, there's a lot of priests I know that bring movies and ideas into their, into their sermons and into their uh, homilies. So I think it's there and people use media in their teaching of faith formation. But I think it's just we have to, we have to be a little bit more aware of the culture and what it's saying. Um, and so it does take a bit of like a prayer. And, and what I say is we become cultural mystics because a mystic is someone who prayerfully um, engages uh, their relationship with God, but also in a very you know, awareness of God's presence in everything in the world today and in all human experience and, and how we like see it present in the popular culture. Mm -hmm. So we're, we become cultural mystics because our cultural imagination is, is brought to fore. The more we're in, uh, we pray with the culture, we pray for the culture. Yeah. And as Daughters of St. Paul, our, one of our gifts for the church is that we pray for those who work in media, media professionals like producers, directors, you know, <laughs> artists, really fine wow. artists, those who are, you know, create the sets, those who are, um, there's so many and we do, we pray every day for those who are involved in media. Thank you. Mm, First of all, so me, you know, I, I knew I don't stay sane on my own. So <laughs> I know the hidden force behind that. I know that. a whole bunch of nuns praying <laughs> for you. Um, the, you were talking about uh, the music and how you're a music junkie. Yeah. Um, not only music, but online also, there's just so much, mm -hmm. so much out there, good and bad. Right. How does one filter going through that? Right. Uh, what are some practices or is it learning how to dialogue i guess understanding how to how to confront those things i think that's exactly it it's it's becoming aware enough that we can um, question the media and i think what we call it as daughters of saint paul is media mindfulness mm. so to become mindful of what you are listening to or watching and what that does is it's like you're bringing your own questions your own values to what you're experiencing through the media and it's not um it's not just deciphering what's good and bad, but it's really trying to find what is that deep existential angst that's coming through and how then can that be a moment of dialogue with the culture? You know, there is something in most movies, there's something that's trying to come forth. And sometimes producers and directors don't know how to articulate it, or writers, they don't necessarily know how to say it, but there is something in there that they're longing for that relationship What's, mm -hmm. what's the desire for relationships? Ultimately, a desire for communion and communion with God, ultimately, because we're always desiring for something more. Yeah. So it is about questioning. I think it's always, and what, you know, being mindful is about asking the questions. And in faith formation, it's about teaching young people 
to Absolutely. be to be critical users so that we don't just absorb everything but we 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 engage with it so I mean, I have, uh, as a kid, I loved all kinds of popular music, and I'm like, yeah, I just like the, I like the songs, I like the, the, I could dance with the music, but you know, you don't always pay attention to the words, and then you kind of like, yeah, yeah I do know the words, but you know, whatever. <laughs> but it, it's just like, as long as there is an awareness, I think that you realize, yeah, that's not the values I promote, yeah, that I live by. Yeah, and know. so, so many people are like, oh my God, you listen to those things, like, oh no. <laughs> You know, it's I like, like hip hop. I got it. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll have that as a theme music okay, as we go out. Um, in your early life, how was media involved in your faith formation? Oh well, I loved movies, music, and books, so there was there. I mean, it was always present in my life. I mean, I watched lots of TV <laughs> as a kid, <laughs> being known to my parents. <laughs> but um, I think it was just always something I loved. I loved the art of it. I loved the uh, production of it. And I didn't even realize then that I'd be a nun who actually <laughs> does do the production end of it too. Um, but I, I just found that there was, there was so much that was being said, and even artistically that was being said in, in media, Dude. in music and movies. And so when I met the Daughters of St. Paul, I was like, that's it. You can preach about Jesus and talk about Jesus and you can do it all in the movies and music and books. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I like that. Awesome. <laughs> you just got hooked from there on. Well, and the Lord worked on me oh, a little yes, bit. Of <laughs> and uh, not only do you produce it, but you're also a part of it, right? You've been yeah. in a film before and you're yeah. a part of a choir and yeah. you have CDs. Talk a little about that and where we can find some of that material. Right. Well, on our website, pauline.org uh, and daughtersofstpaul.com, we have a lot about our music and our music ministry. And it's, we've, it's about 30 years old that we've been recording albums and uh, all different styles of music from contemporary, inspirational, to you know, praise and worship, to classic uh, you know, Catholic hymns. It's kind of like all across the board. <laughs> but I think what we, the main thing is that every Christmas season, we do a, a concert tour. It's just, it's just oh, wow. you know, in some areas of the country that we've been doing this. And we do a, like a two, two and a half week tour. And what it is is that we, we get together, there's usually about 10 of us, and we're all over the country, but we get together right after Thanksgiving. We practice for four days and then we start doing concert. Wow. Well, we get the music ahead of time, so oh, we okay. listen to it. <laughs> but you know, we know our parts and stuff. But what we do is that, you know, it's the traditional Catholic hymns, but with a little twist, you know, traditional Christmas hymns and, you know, we kind of give it a different like, like fun twist and then it's really like we dance and we sing the nuns are like you know they are they say we're sister act well, we're, the real sister sister act. The sister act. we're the real one <laughs> <We're> the real. <laughs> and we really do and we get the kids to you know involved and the kids come up people clap and sing they do everything with us and oh, that's awesome. it's actually a really really fun concert and uh we do props we did a little acts sometimes among us as sisters in the middle of yeah. the songs you know and it's just really a way to get people to, first of all, to see what the meaning of Christmas is, yeah. really, the true meaning of Christmas. But also just that they see that sisters, religious yeah. sisters, can be just happy and joyful and just enjoy our life together. Yeah. And I think that's what makes the most impact upon people. And you know, at our concerts, we get people of all different faiths, Jews, Protestants, Catholics, oh, wow. Catholics who are falling away, and they say they come every year because it's what gets them into the Christmas season. Oh, awesome. Even the Jews. <laughs> <laughs> it's Fantastic. what gets them into We're the Christmas to, season. I mean, media, music reaches everybody. Exactly. It's a common language music, throughout the world. Music touches the soul like nothing else can. Absolutely. Thank you, you know. so much, sister. You're welcome. Uh, I'm very excited. I'll be looking up and I'm going to get your, uh, we'll do a little sing along right now and we'll play your rap song as the <laughs> outro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank fun. you very much. Thank, thank you very much you. for your time. God bless you. Thanks. Four years ago, when my mother passed away, that was the most difficult time in my life, and it was through music that I found healing, God's mercy and grace and comfort.